It looks good, feel good. We're recording. So, Mitch, welcome to What's the Creative up, Block man? Podcast. Uh, I'm glad we finally make making this happen. I know we've uh, we've talked about it for some time. I, I feel like every episode, everybody that I talk to, it's this has been like, it, it, whenever I get a guest on, it's been like uh, months in the making. Yeah. Um, but I'm glad we're finally able to sit down and talk. Um, no, me too. Thanks for bringing everything here. So, so. Uh, just to kind of give a little quick introduction to, just to give a little quick introduction to our listeners. Uh, can you tell us who you are and what you do? Yeah, for sure. Uh, my name is Mitch Hoover. I'm the creative director here at Elevate Creative, um, creative agency here in downtown Columbus. Uh, we got started like five years ago, kind of just branded ourselves as a video production company and through just a bunch of random luck and random things that happened, uh, worked our way uh, up to serve as a full service creative agency. So we, most of what we do is still video, but we've got some branding accounts, some graphic design, some web design, um, work with a lot of creative people here in Columbus and yourself included. We've got to collaborate on a couple projects together, which yep. is awesome. Um, but yeah, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Yeah, so, I mean, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, I, I know eventually we'll kind of, I, I kind of want to get into, you know, Elevate and how you yeah. guys got that started, but I, I guess tell us a little bit about your background, where you, you know, where you're from and how you kind of get it, got introduced to the whole creative world. Sure, yeah, I guess that's part of the problem too, is I just <laughs> assume the company is me. Because um, it's just been, I don't know, you know that feeling, it's just a grind, like. Oh yeah, it's know. nonstop, it's right? It's nonstop. But uh, yeah, so I went to Ohio State. I graduated in May of 2019, uh, actually in electrical engineering, which has nothing to do with, you know, any of this work. Um, but have been doing it since like sophomore year. So um, yeah, like 2014 ish is when I started making videos, and we, it was just like trip videos for fun. Me and my buddies like whipping out our iPhones, shooting in slow mo, and like that first was the thing. Um, and then I got a drone for like my, what would that have been like 19th birthday ish or something like that. And then just got some random drone jobs and then worked into weddings and you know how it kind of just like snowballs from there. But, uh, yeah, it was all just kind of like, it started out of passion for just making funny, uh, dope stuff with my friends who were, you know, we just went on random trips and just we're digging around with the cameras and I got into editing and then uh, some people asked for some things and those turned into clients and they referred to other people and then the whole thing just kind of moved. So yeah, this is now my full-time job and it's, it's pretty incredible like, oh, yeah, how, it, how it just grows and happens. Yeah, it, it's, it's crazy. You, you know, one of the, the, the things that's stood out the most from doing the podcast has been just how it's, pretty much for everybody has been has happened by chance where it's like oh, I wasn't even trying and it just somehow yeah this is what I do now right and it's pretty interesting you know for yourself you know having you know an engineering background and how did that even like translate you know like you leaving out of you know finishing school were you leaving school kind of already oh I'm going to be doing video full time or did you kind of dabble in the uh, corporate world and, and yeah. did a little bit of that before you kind of digging your heels in into the creative world? Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, so I guess it kind of, because I was like working in college, like I had like some opportunities. So there was actually two semesters in school uh, where I took off for video. One, I had this random like digital media internship with this uh, company called College League Weekly. And we just, uh, we'd travel between a bunch of southern schools and and just create content for a few brands who are trying to get into that space um so that was like 2015 and then i had uh i had a couple internships at honda for the my degree and like while i was doing that it, it just didn't really feel right like i just wasn't like that excited about it um and like going into college that was like you know, like I want to be an engineer for an automotive like uh, company. That's just like what I really wanted to do. And um, and you start to get to do it. You're like, this just feels like the same day repeating itself again and again. I don't really feel like I have like any 
real dictation and like I feel like someone could just come in and pop in my spot and the whole thing would move the same and for me it just wasn't like fulfilling enough to to see that as like what I wanted to commit my whole life to um so yeah like I said I had one internship where I took a semester off and then I had another one where it was actually after so I worked at Honda two summers and after the first one uh, there was enough client work that we had that it was like, if I tried to do both full-time school and like move about, there's like project in Reno, project in Boston, project in Florida. And, um, I was like, I can't do both of these things. So, uh, I just did some part-time classes that semester and then rounded out and graduated, like I said, in 2019. And by that time we had enough going on that it was just like, you know, it was like not full, full support. Like, you know, you can obviously, uh, you know, you know how that goes, but it's like, um, it was enough that we could, that I can move and do this thing full time, like right when I graduated. So that was like kind of a big decision. My parents were super supportive of it, which was like really helpful. And like my friends, you met Armand, like yeah. he made that move. So he graduated a year prior to me. We lived together at Ohio State. Um, he's a co-founder of Elevate as well, and he works uh, a corporate job for like, what would that have been like, a little over a year before he came on full time. So like, I like, I started in May and he started this January full time. So it's just kind of like, I don't know, everyone's got like their own path to how it's like works and shifts its way through, but I feel like if it's something that you really want to do, like things will just open up and it'll it'll just happen like, yeah it's pretty interesting you know now that i'm kind of like hearing the timeline mm -hmm. so i'm i'm guessing that right around the time when we first met and kind of started talking was right around this time when you were kind of going through this transition which i had always thought that you know you guys were well first i thought that you know it was just kind of one person doing everything mm -hmm. and then you know obviously when we met and kind of see okay there's there's more people involved and it's not just uh uh, it wasn't, you know, like your typical like one man band type of thing. Like I mean, a lot of creatives that we meet, that that's how you know that's how they work. And um, so it's pretty interesting to know that that was kind of right around the time when we first started talking. That was literally like the, I guess the beginnings of of what Elevate is now, right? Yeah, yeah, it, it is, and it's it's pretty crazy. I mean, your journey. I don't know how much you've talked in your other podcasts about how you worked your way into video, but it's just, um, yeah, man, it's just like the you, you kind of just like put everything out there. You do everything as well as you can. And, and that's what we were doing. So we were, like you said, I don't know if you mentioned lavish visions, but like that's how we were branding ourselves. Right. When we yeah, met. Yeah. Um, and that was like what we started the LLC as. And it was like, we just wanted to, uh, we made the LLC to shoot videos in the luxury real estate space. So that's where like that name oh, okay, came from. Oh, gotcha. It's like lavish visions. We wanted to just like, uh, kind of corner that specific market. But then it's like, when you got into it, all these people are for asking for, um, you know, a whole variety of things. There's concert videos, there's uh, other corporate work. There's, it, we music just didn't want to tie ourselves. Yeah. yeah, music videos. Um, so yeah, it just kind of built out and it got to the point where when we kind of shifted and we got this space, that was like kind of a big step for us. And we, just looked at everything that we were doing. We had more service categories and everything, and we were just kind of like, uh, you know, it, if there's any time to kind of rebrand ourselves and like uh, solidify what we want this to start to look like, it's, it's right now. So that was like right when we started to connect was like at the end of LV. And um, yeah, I mean, we came across your stuff just super impressed with everything that you were doing like your work's always been quality your colors fire that. and like that's those and it's interesting too that you said that we um like you thought that it was just one person and like there that kind of like shifted and it felt like it was more uh i guess i'm kind of curious to hear like what so when i first reached out to um like i, I came across your page i think uh I, I forget his name, um, but uh, I, I, his like IG handle is like Fake Dell. Oh yeah, yeah. So Del, he, Del Nye. yeah. So he's somebody like I've talked to because right around that time I had started kind of getting into the whole sports sports world, mm -hmm. and he had done some stuff with like a few of the bronze players or whatever. Yeah. And um, 
I had reached out to him and we, you know, we were like DM on, online. And then I forgot what it was. Some, something, he, he had shared something. And uh, I think he was looking for somebody in the Columbus area uh, to help like somebody with a project or, or something like along those lines. And he had um, referred to you guys. He's like, oh, talk to them. Mm. reach out to them because you know they're, they're the ones needing help I, I, f- I forget what it was exactly gotcha. but that's how i came across the whole lv page and like your website and stuff and i actually sent out an email uh like on your on your website because right around that time i had started to do a lot of uh, i was kind of you know wanting to i had already been doing like my own one the whole one man band thing for for a while mm-hmm. but i wanted to kind of you know be involved and start working with others where you know either whether it's either being on set or or uh, uh, making marketing myself more as like a freelancer for hire and that was right around the time where i was still doing that like i was still you know regular nine to five job at the time as well Mm -hmm. and i just wanted to just get more experience working with other people and i submitted you know like on the contact form blah blah whatever and i actually uh, remember speaking with armand because he hit me up a couple days later and we you know we spoke a couple hours on the phone just kind of hearing the background of of you know what kind of work you guys do and kind of what you know what you all, all get into and it was after having that conversation after having seen some of the some of your work already that oh okay well, it's you know there's a couple guys that you know they're kind of you know figuring it out and, and doing their, their thing um so from there uh I, t- I talked to Armin f- on the phone and then, you know, maybe it was like a couple months later where, where we met and I, I think you guys were just like, had just recently like moved in here because mm-hmm. I think that's when we first met. Yeah, that's when we first met. And uh, I'm trying to remember, what was that? Uh, yeah, I mean, that was like four or five months after I had initially spoke with Armin. He had reached out and, I, you know, you guys needed some help with like some editing or whatever. Yep. And then that's kind of when we met and yeah. kind of I think that started our Western project. No, I think it was even before that. Was I, I think you guys were doing some stuff for, because I did some edits for uh, the AC and Oh, Cincinnati. you're right. You're right. Yeah. I forgot you chopped that up. So it, it's yeah, crazy. So, it is what it was. So I think that was maybe like about two years ago, close to two years ago. Yep. Um, and, you know, from there, been able to, you know, take part in other projects but one of the cool things that i've seen from from you guys um as you know you guys grown and developed is that mm-hmm. it's uh your your work not only is polished but you guys have been able to you know really from from my perspective you know solidify yourself as as a an actual creative agency as opposed to you know like a one-man band you know just kind of doing all the video work for hire and like i, I don't know it, it's it's uh, it's something unique that i've you know, for me, like I, I appreciate that you guys are doing that, and like I've been able to learn just from seeing how you guys operate and 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 how you guys do work. That ultimately, I want to be able to be in a position to like that where I'm not just doing everything on my own and eventually growing out a team. So, I mean, I guess can you talk a little bit about that? What's yeah. that been like? You know, you you mentioned that you went to school with Armand, and um, is he is there is there are there any other parts that you know any other like co-founders for for Elevate or was it mostly just you guys that kind of started that off? Yeah, so no, there's a, a handful of us, actually, that all friends from college who all threw in on gear, uh, like in that first, like back in like 2015, we made that LLC. So, um, and yeah, we all just kind of like did different pieces of it. I think that's kind of part of it. I appreciate that you said everything that you did, because that's like what we're, um, I don't know, what what we're kind of like proud of is that we we're just like, uh, we just open our arms to people who are talented and creative. And like, we like, we, we're not tied on the way that we do things. We not, aren't like very, we aren't like boastful about like thinking that we're like the best in video. Cause like, we just know what YouTube has taught us. You know, there's like so many people that we've le- worked with who we've learned from. Um, and once you really start to get in, into it and you realize how many ha- hands are on like a project that's going to look like commercial grade um you realize pretty quickly that you you've got to you got to be open to working with a lot of people and like learning um and not being too prideful about that so that's just kind of like um how we've been i guess able to grow is just like growing with people and uh kind of trusting i don't know just trusting that piece of the process i guess like our clients come to us and they see the products that we deliver and um, 
we are able to deliver those things with confidence because we bring on people who are talented and like it, it doesn't need to be just the people who are in our company we've like we reached out to you we're like very um i don't know that's just like a big part of how we've leveraged pretty much all of our client work is trying to get people whose hands make sense and like the talent like everything aligns and uh yeah so I don't know if that really answers your question. But. Well, yeah, it, it did. And like, has it always, was it always like that? You know, like even, you know, starting out, you know, yeah. what, you know, what was, what was your life like, you know, when you first got started, right? Because, yeah, you know, you were doing, you know, uh, you, you mentioned like the real estate videos, mm -hmm. you know, obviously you weren't really thinking like that when you guys got, when you guys first got started. So what was, what was that transition like to, to get to that point where you are today, where, you know, you are able to not only uh, identify and bring on the, the talent that you need for the different, for the various projects to, to meet your clients' needs. But, um, you know, how, how did you, how were you able to get to the point where you're able to, you know, develop that? Right. Yeah. I mean, it started out just, uh, me and one of our other partners, Jeff, would be shooting pretty much everything. So like we really got familiar with uh, the Sony Alpha series and like that was the first gear that we got. We got a couple bodies and we uh, had our gimbal and we just like really figured that out. Um, so that's how we ran for like the first probably like two or three years. Um, and then actually it's funny that you brought up Dell too because he's like, he's actually the first uh, how we, like freelancer for the first other partner that was like outside of our core team that we worked with. Um, and that was in the beginning of 2017. Um, he reached out, we went to school together and actually like had some like weird, like near misses, uh, like on campus. We, we didn't like, we weren't in the same classes or anything, but we just like seen each other through, uh, familiar circles and, um, he had a drone, he had the same type of gear, and uh, there were some people reaching out to him for stuff, and he just, it, he wanted to call to us for expertise, and then it kind of worked out well, because like, we, you know, just hit it off really well, and he was just a super skilled, talented dude. He's killing it, I don't know if you've seen what he's been doing recently, but he's like, working on huge budget uh, music videos in oh, New yeah, York City. Oh yeah, I've seen some of that stuff, yeah, because he's, he's been out in New York for a couple of years now. Uh-huh, yep, he, he uh, he had that Browns internship where he was like on the field shooting all of their Instagram content. Uh, that would have probably been 2018. Yeah, 2017 or 2018. And then um, he graduated and then chilled out in Ohio and did some, he, he really built up his music video portfolio like in the time that he graduated and when he made the move to New York and like that dude just grinds. Like he just like his effects, his edits, like he, uh, he's just a really talented and driven person. So it was like lucky for us to have connected so early. And like, we worked on some corporate stuff together. We flew him out to uh, Texas to shoot a sorority recruitment video actually, like real early. And I don't know, there was just some things that we were able to connect on. And, um, but yeah, so Dell was kind of the first person that we worked with outside of our core team. Um, and then there were a couple other people, Dylan Bradshaw, uh, yourself, there's, you know, a small handful of people between, um, then, and then whenever we turned into, and then like just watching that kind of develop and like seeing how, if we just like focus more on bringing people together and connecting dots, we're one yielding a better product and two, like everyone kind of gets to benefit from it. And three, it's like, it doesn't all have to be a one person show anymore. It's like when you've got a couple of people who are there to shoot and then you got someone else editing it, it just like and then you got someone else on the account management that's actually like speaking with a client and like getting everything together it's like when you're doing all those things as one person it's i mean it is like the full time it's a full time job like yeah i mean not not only is it a full time job it is very taxing and i i feel that a lot of you know a lot of people that listen to this podcast and a lot of creatives who are kind of doing the one man band thing it it's very challenging right to really grow a, as a business and and even you know develop your skills because i feel like you you kind of limit yourself with yeah. what you're with what you're able to do you know like you can you know imagine what um 
what was what was that shoot that we did earlier in the summer with the for the insurance company that you know we had maybe like 20 people like on set um, oh yeah be atomic yeah yep. for be atomic and like At the ohd studio yeah you know can you imagine you know it's impossible to be able to do a project of that magnitude for a client like that you know with one person operating three cameras like it's i mean yeah. you could probably do it but it's gonna be like super difficult and like i even think like something like that where we had you know i think like on crew there were about like 10 to 12 people yep. and it was you know had its own set of challenges even with with that amount of crew um you know not even adding covid but <laughs> um you know it, it's i got I guess one of the things for me is that like a, a lot of people starting out, they feel like they have to do everything themselves. And, and I guess for something I want to take away from the, from the podcast and from you is that, mm -hmm. you know, what, what are some of those things that, you know, could allow that person who's, who thinks they have to do everything themselves and have to have control over everything, you know, w what can help change that mindset a little bit to, to be a little bit more welcoming to not only bringing others to help others grow, but also, you know, to develop and be able to grow your business and, and be able to do the bigger and better things. Yeah, I, th I think it's it's like a lot of it's a lot of actually just what you just said, like devoting time to figuring out what you just said. It's like because when you get into it and you just got new gear and you just got uh, premiere and you're doing these projects for like the first time and like there's there's so many intricacies that you can just go like so deeply into like you can you can spend i mean people devote their whole entire careers to color grading you know what i mean like it, so and, and i i actually have struggled with the the question that you asked a lot it's like the control piece like you care so much about if you're someone who gets into this field you probably care about details right you yeah. probably care about like making sure things are tuned and making sure that like it's all dialed in and you're doing things as professionally and as like um, just as, as detailed as you can be. And for that to translate into business, you kind of have to be thinking about your business in that same detail way. Like, so, but also not feeling like you have to control it. If that makes sense. Yep. It's like, cause on any given, you know, weekend you can be learning one thing or the other you can be learning how to alleviate yourself from some of these business stresses or you can learn about um how to be uh using extra features on your gimbal that you haven't really looked into so it's like it i and it and it's a balance i guess of both like you have to be you have to be good at what you do creatively to be able to have a business that you know is going to be worth growing but um i guess just understanding that that's something i wish I've, i would have maybe understood like a year or two before i really started to get into it was just like looking up on youtube like how to scale a video production business like how to and, and there's some really helpful tools on there there's a youtube channel called the future uh yeah. have you watched that yeah yeah oh, i'm hip <laughs> yeah that dude uh, chris do he's i mean he's kind of like 15 years beyond all like he's whatever in his uh I think he's like in his mid 40s yeah mid 40s like he's yeah. been doing it for like his whole career and everything and um he's just got a lot of insight a lot of stuff that he gives out for free so um just just some exercises like that that kind of open your mind to what you need to be like thinking about and need to be like working towards it's it doesn't necessarily have to be an actionable thing that you're doing like right after you watch those videos but like even if you're just thinking like you know, uh, when a project comes up and it feels like, you know, you've got a couple other things going on. You're like, yeah, I can probably squeeze that in. Like uh, I can, I can do that. Like you tell the client that you can commit to it. Like if there's just a small thing in the back of your mind, that's like, Oh, this guy that I saw on Instagram, like who does the same type of work. Like I've been wanting to reach out to him and collaborate with him. This would probably be a good opportunity to do that. So then it's like, you know, you're cutting in, it's it's half of the work instead of all of the work and yeah. or or even if you just knock off you know 25 percent of it it's just like working in that direction and trying to make yourself more than just one person it's like um that's something that we've learned kind of the hard way but uh it's definitely something that we've tried to try to make a a 
core of Elevate Creative is just bring bringing in the talent, bringing in the people, not feeling like you have to do it all as one person. And how how soon after you kind of started opening yourself up to that, were you able to kind of really n- notice those those benefits of, of being of doing that? Yeah, I mean, pretty immediately, honestly. It's just like, uh, th- I mean, the fact that you can wake up on a weekend and not have to edit a video that you otherwise would have had to is like, you know, that in itself is, um, and when you have like three or four things going on in the course of a couple of weeks, it's just like, it, um, yeah, it's just, it, it's just pretty, it pretty apparent. Like right when it starts to move that way, you're like, oh, like you can just feel the relief like fall over you. And it's just like, um, when you can trust someone and that when like, I, I guess actually like, to more specifically answer your question, it's like the first time that I saw a product that didn't just come straight out of my laptop, that was like someone who I worked with that I was like pumped about because that is, that for me was a huge part of the resistance of like letting up that control. For me, it was editing um, because I just like had a vision and I just wanted to make sure that that vision was executed. So like the first time, um, and I I don't remember specifically when it was, maybe it was with Dell, but um, the first time that, there was an export or a draft that I was like just pumped about and I didn't even see how it got put together. I just like trusted someone else. Um, that, that was kind of it. And it just kind of like opened my mind to like what all is possible when you're collaborating and working with other people. And so even, even when you're doing that, right? Like were, were there any challenges with, you know, that you had to deal with, uh, with kind of delegating the work and, and kind of giving up that control. Mm-hmm. And I, I guess that's, I mean, that's another thing too, that a lot of creatives struggle with is is being able to to delegate so like what you know what are you know what are some of your processes or some of the things that you consider when you're either handing off you know a project or uh you know or even like shooting you know like what what are some of the things that you you take into account that you know that can help ultimately get you to where you wanted to be yeah yeah no i mean it's definitely it hasn't been like the smoothest thing that's you know uh it's not the smoothest process to make that transition happen because you need to be the, the hardest part about it is making sure that everything's being communicated. So you got um, what the client wants, you got kind of like your vision on it, and then you got whoever's executing it and like bridging all of those things together and making sure that everyone knows what they need to know. That's actually the Ohio Wesleyan project that we worked on. That was something that like, so that week we were uh, going on a little uh, internal tra- team retreat to Vermont and we needed someone to cover for the shoot and you stepped in and uh, uh, another shooter, Brandon, stepped in and it was awesome and we were pumped and we did all, we had like all these other things we were trying to get finished up before we went out there um, on that trip and that project, there were some things that we talked about after the project too that just, it it was, we didn't lay up the roles and delegations clear enough um, for both you and Brandon to do your jobs like effectively. Yeah. And that was something um, that came from, you know, not, uh, I mean, one, just like honestly being in a rush to not really getting you guys involved with the client early enough that you could hear what they were kind of looking for too. Like we were pl- trying to play middleman too much there. That's something that we've realized. Like we have a discovery call with a client, right? Hear what they want, kind of see, you know, what all they need. We think about who would be a good fit for that. And then we immediately start to loop them into the conversation. Like the, you could be texting back and forth for an hour trying to figure out what's like trying to be said from the client, or you could just loop in someone on a 30 minute zoom call and then everyone's on the same page and you don't have to be playing so much back and forth. So I think that's a big piece of it is the communication and making sure that everyone knows what the expectation is as early as possible. Um, and I think that actually also, I think there is some, um, there's like some creative limitations that you just unnecessarily implement when you're trying to like um, just control too much of it. If if you loop some other people in early and uh, the whole conversation is collaborative instead of like uh, talking about what we need or like what needs to happen, if it's more like you know this is what they want and like how can we make it happen? Yeah. Um, that's been kind of a big shift for us is just understanding that. So, yeah, I mean, and and when it comes to process, it's like we have the discovery call, we kind of like loop those people in and then we work through 
all of our other pre-production processes or if it's more on the design side, just working through those um, design processes more collaboratively and together from the beginning instead of like getting halfway through it and be like, oh shit, we need help. Yeah, and like, I mean, it's, it's cool that you mentioned that, that, that particular shoot because for, I mean, like I, I think we, you know, ended up doing the best that we could with, you know, for the, for that project. And I, I don't think it turned out bad at all, but they had, had his challenges where, mm-hmm. you know, like you said, where it, where, you know, especially when, when you're looping and looping in people that haven't necessarily met and like worked together a whole lot, ha- having those, those prep meetings and, and really understanding what the goals are and, and how those, how everything's going to be delegated as far as like, not, not only with roles, but as far as like, how we're gonna execute, you know, what needs to be executed, right? And and it, for me, I felt like it, it if we would have had more, you know, like you said, I, I guess more preparation in the in the in the sense of, hey, this is these this is what we're trying to do. Um, we're having you know you and this other person come in, and this is what, you know, the client needs, mm-hmm. and these this is what we because I even with that like we weren't really involved with you know, a whole lot of, none of the, the, the creative decision-making. Right. And, yeah. We kind of just like gave you the shot list that we were looking for. And then we kind of like, just, you know, you were both expected to come back with it. And then there was so much like uh, duplicate shooting and like all of these different things because like, you know, you're both individually trying to make sure that everything gets done yeah. and it, it just, yeah. So that, that's definitely a project that jumps out um, and uh, just kind of like, highlights the just i mean it was a big learning lesson as yeah i mean and, and i think with that too is it's a uh, for me it was a learning a good learning experience that even even before we started shooting that i feel like for me even knowing that wasn't really 100 percent prepared to kind of go into that shoot like i had my own expectations from the conversations that we had but mm-hmm. um you know if, if if that's the case being able to voice that that hey, you know, we have this other person coming in and really being able to communicate with that other person because, like, I didn't mm-hmm. really talk to him until, you know, five minutes before, <laughs> right. you know, we're supposed to start shooting and yeah. then we're just kind of figuring out, who's like, oh, well, I'm doing this and you're going to do that. And it ended up, uh, there were, ended up having a lot of redundancies that could have, you know, I, I think we, if, if done different, we could have been a little bit more efficient. And, yeah. And, and then, yeah, to turn that, those two pieces that were, like, really good into like one just incredible killer shot yeah it's like i i I think you you know i think you have a lot of similarities to a good friend of mine josh emmerich who i've I've had on the podcast as well but you know he's real big into processes and like even now whenever um you know we have whenever i'm working on a project with him Mm -hmm. um he's he's very he's very keen on on the um On, on having everybody on the same page and having everybody prepared and, and a lot of it is, is really driven off of the the effort and like the attention to detail that he puts into the preparation mm-hmm. leading up to the shoot that he has you know one-on-one calls with everybody and he lets everybody know these are my expectations this is what you know this is what I'm going to have everybody doing and then not only that then after he has like the one-on-one calls and kind of lets everybody know, you know, what's going on and what the expectations are, he'll loop in everybody and we all get together on a group chat or video chat or whatever. And, and we really iron out those details. And, um, even with that, uh, knowing, communicating that you don't, ha- I want you to do this thing a certain way and I want you to do it this way, but um, being able to those other people that you're collaborating with giving them the freedom to make their own creative decisions yep. within that as well because there's you know there's not only one way to skin a cat right like there's every everybody has their own like little different ways mm-hmm. of how to do it and I, I think if you are um, as a leader if you're able to enable those other creatives or those other people that you work with to have 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 a lot more say into how things are done mm-hmm. and at the end of the day as long as what the finished product is what the client wants and it's something that everybody's happy with. I, I feel you can create a much better product by enabling everybody involved to, you know, excel at what they're good at. Cause obviously you kind of going back to it, like you're, you know, you're choosing to work with these people because you, you trust them and you, you like what they do and you think that they could do the job. So being able to enable them to let them do the job, how they can do the job. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, 
So like, and I think that's something that a lot of people struggle with as, as they start to kind of grow and expand and working with other people. Um, I've had experiences like that where I've reached out to, to other people to, you know, not only kind of help out, but just to kind of, uh, you know, expand the network. And like, I've come across other people that have just been heavily guarded and like, oh, well, I just do everything myself and I don't want to work with other people. And, and it's, I, one of my goals with the podcast is be able to communicate to creatives like that, that it, it doesn't always have to be like that. You don't have to do everything yourself. And, mm-hmm. and at some point you're going to have to depend on other people if you want to, you know, grow and, and get better. Cause I even think like working with other people, it allows you to not only kind of absorb some of their processes and the way they do things, but just for me, like I, I, I work with other people and I see people doing great work. It motivates me to, you know, kind of up my game and be like, oh, okay, this is great. Like, oh, I was a part of this project and mm-hmm. how can I apply those lessons learned from, from working with them to, to my own projects to help excel those even more in the future. Um, so I, so I, I, I think it's great that, you know, that you guys are able to kind of open the doors for other creatives to bring them on board and kind of enable them to, you know, make those creative decisions and, and also be a part of, you know, what you guys are making. Because I think that, you know, kind of goes back to what you said that it allows you to, you know, really be proud and take pride uh, with, with the work that you put out. And it allows you to, you know, not only do more, but also, you know, do bigger and better. Yep. Um, so with, with that being said, like what, what has that been like this year, you know, obviously COVID and, and everything going on, like what, what has this year been like for, for Elevate? You know, you guys are kind of going in the middle of this rebranding and mm-hmm. kind of, you know, shifting how, how you guys go about marketing yourselves. W- you know, what, what have been some of those challenges with not only finding work, continuing work, but, you know, growing a creative agency? Yeah, I mean, most of this year, like right when COVID hit, we had like, you know, a handful of shoots that were just canceled uh, indefinitely. Some of them we've picked up and finished and um, worked out, but some of them, some of them are still just out there floating around. Um, So we, our plate was kind of cleared for us, just like everyone's, you know, kind of in the space was. And um, we really took, we took, a good part of we took all of March and a good part of April redoing our website and kind of like thinking about and laying down foundationally everything that we just talked about it's like that's we 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 want to be a vehicle that just connects you know just connects people like we want to be an agency that's fueled by and powered by a lot of different freelancers and a lot of different creatives who are um, or, or small firms even that we're just like kind of connecting with and like um, really trying to just uh, facilitate and um, facilitate and create the best products that we can and we don't have to be you know it doesn't have to be people who are just in this internal company who are working for us like full-time or part-time or whatever it's it's kind of just like whoever we can loop in to um, yield the best product and um so we spent a good part of the spring and summer working through that messaging working through like the thoughts about it how it translates how it shifts the business and like changes the way that we need to structure some of those early conversations with the client like um and things like that but we i guess we were also on like the the work side of things we were lucky enough that we had uh we had a good handful of clients who um, were either contracted on retainers or that we had some projects that were outside of video. We did uh, a big web design over the summer. We did um, a whole branding piece for this company, this insurance tech company, Beatomic, who we actually shot that piece for in uh, September. So we were able to stay busy enough that we could like keep the lights on. And that wasn't something, I mean, there was definitely some stresses with it. Cause it's like, how is it, how long is this going to go on? Like, yeah. When are we gonna be able to shoot again? Cause that's such a big part of um, our revenue and what we do. But um, yeah, I mean, that's this year's really been kind of solidifying who we want to be and like how we want to, how we want our agency to grow. Cause like, 
I mean, and, and you've, I, I'm interested to hear too, how you kind of like, um, like your thoughts on that. Cause you've, you've got to work with a lot of different agencies, a lot of different places in the city. Um, you worked with Seraph recently, you yeah. worked with, you t- I, we had a brief conversation about, uh, what you're talking about with Doug on your way out to, to Zanesville or, yeah. uh, um, so like, yeah, I mean, everyone's journey is different. Everyone's like the way that they want to structure what they're doing is different. And you just kind of got to figure out what's best for you. And this year has been a lot of identifying that and figuring out how we can come into 2021 really, really hot. And like, just yeah, I mean, people so, know. yeah, like, I mean, for me, right. What we're doing right now is, is, is something that I've, put a lot of starting to put a lot more focus on where I feel it it started as something that yeah I want to do it for fun everybody's doing a podcast I like to talk I listen to podcasts myself but you know why do I want to start a podcast and and what do I want it to 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 look like because I feel for me I'm still trying to like honestly I I, I'm always kind of like reinventing myself in a sense of like identifying what are I really enjoy kind of just doing whatever feels best at the moment. So like I have a lot of varying interests and in, in, into like the different things that I, I get involved with. And I feel like right now the the podcast is something that I want to focus on and, and, and put a lot of energy into helping grow. But even with myself, with a lot of the work that I do, um, you know, something that like I, I look up to what you guys do with, you know, with, with Elevate and, and having an agency is that I am mainly that one man band and I do a lot of work. You know, obviously I have my own client work that I, that I do, but I do a lot of freelancing and working with other agencies and creatives and, and kind mm-hmm. of being everywhere. And, and one of the things that for me has been really identifying what are those different elements and, and, and people that I need to connect to, to connect with to to eventually start building out my own team. Um, so that's something that like I've with with all of, all of the work that I do is, is really identifying, um, absorbing that those different lessons that I learned from working with with a uh, you know variety of people to you know how can I apply that to myself to eventually be able to to grow out a team because I feel like something that I've struggled with a lot has is, is really been you know, how going about, you know, finding people that can, uh, can complement what I, what I do and can help, you know, grow and, and kind of, and do that. And it's, I don't want to say that I haven't had the opportunity to, to do that, but I just, I, I guess it just, the timing hasn't been right for me and I'm still kind of like trying to figure that out. So it's, it's, how, how do I put this? Like really being able to you know, I want to be able to c- continue to connect with people, and I, I, I think eventually I will figure out what it is that that I, you know, that I, I think eventually I'll be able to put myself in a position to, you know, either grow up, grow an agency or kind of plug myself in with with another agency. Which I mean, I'm not I'm not totally opposed to that. Mm-hmm. And and be, I feel like you're kind of doing that now too, right? Anyway, yeah. it's like it's just and it's happening, you know. Uh, it's happening pretty naturally just because of your work and you're just, you do what you do well. Yeah. So it, it like, I don't know. And a lot of it is just kind of really figuring out what, you know, what I want to do because like, to be honest, like it's, you know, I really enjoy, you know, doing client work and, and working with, you know, certain clients and, and being able to put, put that out. But for me, I get the most joy with actually creating and producing. Mm-hmm. So, while some of my strengths may not be in a whole sales and and really marketing and kind of getting the client work right um once all of those things are, are put in place it, you know I, i'm able to kind of excel in that point where i can create right yep. but at the same time it, you know how does that align with with my personal goals and you know i, I don't know it's sometimes i think about like hey man I, man I should just go and work for you know try to work for an agency and and, and kind of link up with somebody in that in that sense and, and work, you know, under a company mm-hmm. um, or, you know, start my own creative agency, which, you know, I've had conversations with people and and I, I think there's there's some potential there to kind of start growing an agency mm-hmm. and, and providing services of that nature um, as opposed to just kind of like one off videos, which I, I think there's there's nothing wrong with 
either, I think. I just don't know like what I really want to do. Um, it's especially with this year, it's been challenging where I'm, I'm grateful that while a lot of the challenges that COVID has, has, has placed that I've still been able to kind of, you know, be able to find work because I'm, I, I feel like I've, I'm pretty flexible in that sense that I'm, I can adapt to like, you know, working with different agencies, I can yep. still handle my own client work and it's not yep. just limited to, you know, w one, one specific lane. So, I mean, I, I don't know, it's, it's a, I know it's a long winded answer, but I, I feel like for me, I, I want to, I feel with what I'm doing with the podcast is going to help me really identify where, which path I take. Right. Yep. And this is, I mean, you're doing it 45 minutes or an hour at a time. It's just like, it's kind of like a, um, a little thought experiment for yourself to be just like thinking about what it's like on the other side of the table and like hearing all, you get to hear all these different perspectives. You're putting all this together. You get to, um, to edit it and everything. So it's like, I, I feel like this, is like you couldn't be doing anything more, like aligned with with that right so and it's pretty interesting because like i mean uh, i've mentioned it be before in the podcast is that it's i feel like a lot of these conversations are selfishly for me but at the same time i i definitely think that they're i'm not the only one that feels this way or, or thinks this way so yeah. you know being able to have those conversations and not only help myself but have the ability to help you know whoever listens that hey you know maybe those are things that i've considered or maybe those are things that i haven't thought about yep. and that can help them so i i think it's you know, right now with the podcast, you know, I think, you know, that's kind of what's, you know, kind of led me to want to put more energy into this is to, you know, really help solidify what my path forward is going to be. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, we've had conversations before where a, a lot of my interests lie with, you know, with sports and, and how can we go about creating, you know, not only creating content, but, you know, uh, incorporating a whole marketing mm -hmm. and branding side to it where you got to get links in with the crew, man. I know. You see like, this you see they won last yeah, night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually watched the game last night, yeah. so that, that's pretty cool. Um, it's, it's That stadium's going to be nuts. Oh, yeah. That I mean, stadium's like, going to be crazy. What's that, like right around the corner from here? Mm -hmm. and yep, right on. Yeah, you can, I see it every time I come around 670. It's just like, I mean, they got like the, the shell of the structure up. That's, I mean, I think they're, yeah. I, I don't know if it's next season. Are you going to hear a little French bulldog <laughs> snorting in the Astro? Leave them alone, man. Yeah, like it, it's, uh, you know, I, I think with, Columbus, um, not only with like sports, but with the whole creative world, I think it's pretty interesting seeing how, how things shake out over the next few years, because, you know, like you mentioned, you know, you're not the only creative agency in town. Like there's a handful of them that are doing great work. And, and as Columbus continues to grow, you know, in, you know, in the startup world and with sports and just everything else going on, like it's, there's definitely a lot of room for, for a lot of people to grow and, and to, you know, eat. Yeah. I mean, that's, I had actually a really good conversation with, um, Scott from Ohio HD, Scott Handel, the owner of that whole studio. And I mean, you know, you've been over there enough times. What he's built out is insane. Like yeah. he's, I don't know how old he is, mid fifties, maybe, or something like that. Yeah, 40s, something like, I mean, but he's been doing it yeah, for, he's you been know. doing this for his whole life and he's got, you know, so much gear, so much gear. And he's got, they just built out their second studio. And I had a really good conversation with him about um, how a lot of people, a lot of like uh, large companies feel like they need to go to LA or New York to get like solid content and get like, like very high quality commercial grade content. And um, what he's about over there is just like, trying to make that not the case. Like he, he doesn't want it to be the case where it's all of the biggest companies have to work with all of the biggest agencies to yield the product that these guys want, that the, that the companies want. It's like, how can we figure it out so that like, you know, everyone who is like really passionate and really cares and does their own things. Cause he, he's watched just so many, um, he's had so many horror stories with all these producers and all these people at these companies, that, this, these media companies that have existed for, 30 or 50 years that are just like soul sucking, um, to be with in yeah. the studio. And, and he sees the contrast between, you know, younger people coming in, people who are passionate, people who like are in this because that's like, because they've just been glued to it. And, um, yeah, it, it was, it was a really good candid conversation where he was just like, 
it's like man anything you guys need like we'll try to make it happen like yeah and like scott's been another a key part of of being able of another enabler of of people to you know he's always had his doors open to creatives mm -hmm. uh at, at all different levels to where not only does he you know he he helps educate you know with the whole renting process and kind of the gear that you need for for different projects but even being able to bring people on and and sure you may not have a whole lot of experience you know doing this but he's he's very been good about you know bringing in those people that are passionate and mm -hmm. and and have an interest in in learning the different aspects of like the whole video production world that you know you get an opportunity to grow and, and to learn with them at the same time yeah. and he's he's definitely been um you know very influential in that sense where he's he's all for you know helping grow the mm -hmm. the whole production world here in, in central ohio and yeah. columbus and i think that's what we gotta do man i think that's what this is about i think it's like um i don't, I don't know it, it it feels like a like a movement like some sort of a maker's movement where it's like all these people like the the creative uh just the creative network in columbus is here it's just it feels kind of hard to find it feels like it's not yeah. as and like, and it's not like, new york it's not yeah and like and i think too and like another you know that's another benefit of having the podcast mm -hmm. and you know shout out to to a very good friend of mine ross who he has a, a podcast himself what you don't hear and it, it's it's really just connecting all of it's it's literally doing that right so you know here at the creative block you know one of my goals is to talk to other creatives who are you know in the different stages of their journey and by doing by having different guests on you get to hear their perspective the majority of them have been from here from the central ohio area that you know they are part of this network mm -hmm. and and being able to bring everybody together and not only help establish those connections but you know help each other you know where, where you can because it's while well, sure it's competitive but it doesn't have to be like Oh, like it, like there's really not, there's nothing that's keeping everybody from being able to eat and to be able to grow, you know, their own specific lanes, right? So I, I think that's one of the, the cool things about being able to have this podcast is, is be able to, to kind of be part of that connection and, and being able to bring those people together to, you know, not only, you know, I, I think like having a different guest on, you just get introduced to different people that you may not have known about. Yep. Um, and, and there's definitely a large talent pool in the whole creative space here, not only from, you know, video production, photography, you know, fashion, obviously Columbus is real big on fashion, but you also have, you know, musicians and, I mean, mm -hmm. hell, even, even like acting and like there, there's mm -hmm. definitely a lot of, uh, the, I feel like the creative, like, I feel like we're like in a bubble that it's, it's just continuing to grow and it, it's it's crazy yep. like I, I definitely want to continue to be a part of that and see how it grows over the next few years for sure and i think i mean just stacked on top of that too outside of the columbus piece it's just like i mean over the past what like eight eight years five to eight years like the accessibility to all the tools that you need to be able to create something that it, like looks really incredible like um i think that that has a huge thing to do with it too with like the just how you know if you really want to you can be working a serving job uh or a valet job or whatever um save up enough money to get yourself a piece of gear that you can be producing professional grade content with or professional grade whatever it is, or, or you just um if you're really interested in graphic design like all, you're one creative cloud suite like month away like subscription month away to to be delivering those products and yeah. it's like i think that that's um i mean i don't know what that was like in the early 2000s or 90s because you know we were <laughs> like so yeah. young then. but it's just like I, I think that that stacked on top of everything that you just said about um this city and the potential uh for people in the city is is just it's i don't know it's exciting it's, yep. it, it just lets, it, it feels like there's a shift that's happening and it feels like more people are able to do things that in the past they weren't. And that's really exciting to me. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess as we start to wrap up, you know, what are, you know, what are some of the things that maybe you want to share to, to like up and coming creative or, you know, somebody who's kind of in their own lane trying to figure it out. Like, you know, what are, you know, do you have any advice for, for that person? 
Yeah, I mean, um, I think, like, the biggest thing, uh, there's a lot of different ways to, to answer that question, but one of the biggest things for me that I wish I would have realized earlier was to be able to, to, to trust and to lean on other people, whether that's, you know, even something as simple as, like, just hitting people up and just reaching out and seeing if you can be on the phone with them for like 30 minutes and just figure things out. It's like, you, this, this isn't something that you have to do alone or something that you have to, to navigate alone. Um, there's a lot of resources on YouTube. There's a lot of things that you can go figure out just like by yourself in isolation, but getting act out there and being with people who are doing it and like learning from them, um, like in action, that's something that like the difference between those two things, at least for me has been like, uh, it's it's been astronomical the difference between yep. those two things so I would just say I mean it's you know it's not the easiest thing to do right now in the moment like that you're making this podcast to like you know meet up socially with someone and like to or to go on a shoot pay back off the shoot with somebody and just act as a PA and be like hey I, I just you know I'll carry around the gear like whatever you got next coming up like let me know when I'm, I'm there like those few hours for you to go out there and do that and be on and make those connections and see how this person who you admire their work is interacting with a client. Like sometimes, like I've, I've looked, I've really, um, uh, there's a couple of shoots that I went on in like New York and some other places where there's some people who I was like really, like I thought that they just knew the entire world. Like they knew every single thing that you could possibly know about, about this stuff. And you get out there and you realize that when they're speaking with their, with the client and like there's, there's just like some misses that you're like these people are human too and there's there's something i think that there are both like um there's like a lot of positive things that you can take from them as it like from being around people as far as um just the conversations and like how you kind of handle the whole like production piece of things but there's also um some like you kind of see the gaps too and you see that like when you're around a professional client um and producer relationship you see that sometimes the, like the client doesn't even know what they want really and like it just so so i think that seeing all of the extra stuff um the extra positive pieces that you can pick up on and, and take those traits that you can kind of like work into your communication or your whatever it is in, in your processes yeah, yeah your processes um, I think that that's extremely valuable. And I also think that just like being around it, you can see that this isn't like this unattainable super, you have to be perfect at everything to even have a shot at like working with someone like that kind of thing. It's like, you know, it's, it's, it's just more attainable. And, and once you can start seeing yourself, uh, in those circles and on those sets and all, like, that's, that's it. Like you just got to picture yourself there and, and it'll end up working itself out. And is there, you know, I guess, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, what you guys got in the, you know, what to look forward to in the future with, you know, for yourself or, or even Elevate? Yeah. Um, so like I was talking about earlier, like this year, we've really tried to iron out a lot of who we are and what we want to do. So um, 2021 Elevate, we're going to be working a lot to just build out our network even deeper. Like we're really trying to focus on our sales and marketing so we can be like just turning a lot more stuff. So hopefully, um, 2021 for us is going to be a lot of, uh, connecting with new people, like, um, especially in Columbus, we want to be working with a lot of people here in Columbus. So if anybody's hearing this and they're like interested in what we do and, um, jump over to elevate creative IO and just kind of like shoot us a, shoot us your contact info and just like get us, get yourself in, our, our network and just we can have a conversation we can um that's that's something that we're going to be trying to do like Sweet. really really trying to focus on um because we realized i mean you said it earlier it's it's a lot of the gaps for people isn't the potential for producing it's like getting the work so it's like if we can just try to be a machine about getting the work we've got a big enough portfolio we've got things that we know and we can deliver with confidence we can just be churning on that then we get to just like help all these other people out and provide work and provide projects and provide um service on both ends so we're really going to be leveraging ourselves that way and i mean personally i don't have a very good uh work-life balance so i'm going to be working <laughs> on my work-life balance and uh 
yeah, try not to try not to get too uh, tr- try to create a little bit of space between myself and the company, and um, so, not I to mean, get can, too excited yeah. about everything that I just said. Cause that yeah, no. So me I mean, going. can you talk a little bit about that? Because I mean, yeah. that's something too that a lot of people struggle with is oh, that work life balance. I mean, I have kids, I have a family at home, and I it's uh, it's it's something that I've struggled with and I, I'm it's continuously evolving and I'm always figuring it out, especially as the kids get older that, you know, you can't always be, you know, zoned in all work, head head down and work. I mean, there's times where you need to do that and you need to focus and, you know, get Mm -hmm. things done. But, you know, what are some of the things, some of the challenges that you've had with, you know, work life balance and, and what are the things that you kind of want to improve upon? Yeah. I mean, I think it's been, it's it's a hard thing because like uh for me it's feeling like i have a break on the weekend like there to me in my head they're just it doesn't really feel like there's a weekend and i don't know like if that's just because in college uh i'd be you know doing coursework through the whole week and then i'd be editing mostly on the weekends or whatever i don't know it's, it's something uh some sort of uh, habitual process just kind of like developed there and i i just so creating space and like, cause there's always a million things you can do, right? It's like every single weekend, there's something else that you can be doing. If it's you here for the podcast, if it's, you know, whoever, like, so I'm trying to really just create some space. And I think that's something going into next year that I really want to do that I feel like I've lost is like creating things from a place of just passion and not from like creating pieces that are like, just for me I don't make time for that it's always um something that we're making for someone else and I think that that's that's like one small exercise that I've realized I've uh started to read I've never read anything really at all oh, really? and uh I just started to read a few months ago so that helps me kind of just like slow down and be in one thing because I, I think that's another thing that I struggle with too is just my mind's always jumping on 10 15 different things that could be done I feel you. I mean, and even kind of going going back to, you know, creating work for yourself. I mean, that's another thing that this podcast, you know, is is, is something for myself. And, mm-hmm. and kind of for a while there, I didn't want it to turn into like work where I didn't want it to be. I didn't want to do it and have it feel like, oh, OK, this is another piece that I need to get out and, and do all that. I mean, and I think it's I mean, even with me doing video now, it's it's kind of allowed me to really figure out that you know, I'm doing this for myself. And if I'm going to do it for myself, then why, you know, why am I going to half-ass it? And, and mm-hmm. I should do what I do everything that I can and use my talents, you know, the best way possible so I can make the best possible product out of this. And, and this is something for myself that not only is it helping me, you know, like I said, to, you know, really hear other people's perspectives and, and, and grow the network and just kind of, you know, open open my eyes to, to different possibilities. and But that also can help other people do the same thing. Yeah, I mean, I think what you're doing is incredible. I, I think that this is this is like the perfect, like the perfect pref- passion project because you are, you're doing something that you enjoy, that you love. It's fulfilling your, like, your personal outlet. And it's also like you're figuring out the questions that you have. Like, this is like, you're setting aside time because I think that's a hard part too, is like um, just blocking off time. Like, I, I don't, all, all of my time feels like it just like somehow sifts its way together and uh just you know the, it's it's felt great sitting here and having this conversation with you and like the fact that you just get to do that for an hour or two at a time is it's like a really incredible thing a really good exercise so yeah i, I think you it. found it like I yeah, think yeah. You found it, it's it's cool i mean i think it's cool that you know being able to kind of have these conversations like that i mean i feel a lot, a lot of them i'll have similar conversations like in the dms and you know, they kind of go forgotten. And I feel like with this, you know, it's something that we're able to kind of not only, you know, re revisit and listen mm-hmm. to in the future, but also, you know, have something to look back on and, and, you know, find those like little tidbits that, Hey, you know, excuse me, you know, this was talked about, or this was a subject back then. And, you know, it can help in the future. Yeah. Just being able to look back at, at the, you know, the conversations that were had and, and kind of help propel, you know, whatever challenges you may be going, you know, you may be having in the future. So I guess with that being said, you know, Mitch, thank you for, for coming on. Thank you for, you know, letting us use the space and, 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 and being a guest. Um, where can we find you on social media? And then if you have any other closing thoughts, uh, I'd say we can wrap it up. 
Yeah, no, uh, thank you for coming over here. It feels good to just talk to somebody that's like, you know, uh, a different face. So, um, yeah, I mean, Instagram, my handle is Mitch Hoover, uh, elevatecreative.io as well for all the company stuff. That's both on the website's elevatecreative.io as well as the Instagram handle. So, um, yeah, hop on there. And, and I mean, like I said, I we are going to be trying to build out our creative network as deeply as we can. So um, anybody who hears this who's interested at all, like jump in, fill out your name in the contact form, and um, we'll get you we'll get you queued up, and hopefully we can collaborate. Sweet, Matt. Again, thank you for coming on, and here's another episode.